often people have problems with their hydronic heat pumps. They're too loud and it's annoying them in the house and it's annoying the neighbors and it might sound like a motorbike. So today I want to tell you how uh, to avoid that, what to look for in a heat pump and show you what a good heat pump sounds like. And to be honest, it might be hard to hear. <laughs> In Australia, there are now a lot of heat pumps available. Five years ago, there was just a couple, and now you can buy them at a lot of plumbing stores, people are importing them themselves, there's heat pumps everywhere. So how do you know you're gonna get one that isn't noisy, isn't gonna annoy you, your family, wake you up in the middle of the night, annoy your neighbors, which might end up in a lawsuit. You know, that happens, unfortunately. And a really important thing to look at is the data. So a lot of them will have uh, a decibel rating and they will show that decibel rating for a sound power level and a sound pressure level and what you want to look at is the sound power level that is the important um, piece of information here ideally next to that uh, that decibel rating uh, they will have a testing standard mentioned say like EN I can't remember what the number is but like 3501 something like that or a British standard and what that means is it's verified it's been tested in a lab and they have a piece of paper that says, yes, this has been tested. This is actually how noisy it is. Because what we've seen over the years is there's a lot of heat pumps that just will say, ah, you know, 55 decibels at three meters. But that's not, that hasn't been verified by anyone. They could just be making it up. And it sort of sounds like they're making it up when you actually hear the heat pump run. Sure, it's actually good if they're showing you a, uh, a distance where the reading is taken from. That, that's a great um, thing as well. But definitely look for that, uh, uh, <coughs> that certification. That's really important. And then we want to look for a sound uh, power level of ideally below 60. So we're looking at the say 58, 56, even 54, maybe even 52. Uh, and sometimes if you go for geothermal heat pumps, they can be even quieter, they can be less than 50. How that happens is that, uh, well obviously the geothermal heat pumps, they're sort of inside and they don't have moving parts really that are exposed to uh, the outside, so they're well acoustically insulated. But Air to water heat pumps, like the one you can see behind me, they have a big fan in there, which needs to pull air through the heat exchange, uh, the heat exchanger, the finned tubes, and they have a compressor inside, and they might have a few other bits and pieces. And they're the two main bits that make noise in the um, air to water heat pumps, is the compressor. So that's like the motor that spins around really fast and compresses the refrigerant and the gases and you know moves the heat around. And also the fan. The fan can be a big um, noise factor, and not only because of the actual motor and the fan running, but the sound of it pulling through the, the heat exchange fins, that can generate noise. So sometimes some heat pumps have them really close together because they're trying to make the unit compact and save money. Uh, and so that creates a, a bit more noise uh, because of the turbulence and the, the difficulty of the fan to pull or push the air through. Now the compressor, a lot of the compressors are the same, but it depends how internally, how they acoustically insulate the compressor so that it doesn't release the noise into the environment around. And so you wanna make sure that it's got uh, basically acoustic insulation inside and that the, basically, it's, I know it sounds strange, but the bigger the unit, the better, because it means that, if you look at the unit behind me, you could have some manufacturers literally make the same output size as that behind me, but half the physical size. And the reason is they have those tubes, those fins closer together, and they have a smaller fan in there, but bigger motor. So it means they save money in the production, but it costs you with the, the fan has to work harder and spin faster to get the amount of air it needs through. So it's costing you power, but it's generating noise. And then the same with the compressor. They might have the same compressor as a, a, you know, a premium brand, but if it's just there, uninsulated, like not acoustically insulated, then it can release the noise into the um, surrounding environment. So I've been talking to you with the heat pump off and with the magic of video editing, we're gonna turn it on and let you listen to what it sounds like running when it turns on and then running for a little bit. I'll be back in a sec. So it's starting up right now.
and the compressor hasn't turned on yet but the fan is running and I actually only know that because I saw the blades start spinning and a bus just went past but yes the compressor has now started and I can just hear it it sort of sounds like a fridge running so that's running right now um, I don't think you're going to be able to hear it over there but let me show you that it is running there's some leaves over here and if I drop them here The fan is blowing, it's blowing cool air out because it's uh, harvesting heat from the air. And that's running and that'll happily keep running at this level whenever it needs heat. The compressor will ramp up and down and right now it's uh, probably at this stage of the cycle, it's at about 30, 40% capacity and it will the ramp up if it feels it needs to uh, and sure it will get slightly louder if it has to ramp up but only marginally louder now I wish I could show you one which isn't as impressive acoustically um, thank goodness we don't actually have any of those installed anywhere but I've seen enough of them to be able to describe them in detail and I think the best way to describe them is uh, it sounds like a posty bike doing a burnout. It's an annoying, really, you know, high-pitched sound of the compressor working fast. Um, the fan is doing all it can to try and, you know, push through as much air so it can harvest as much heat out of it. Um, and that's really what you would expect from the really entry-level heat pumps. So and there's actually a lot of heat pumps out there that have they're actually made in the same factory and there's two big companies uh, which make uh, OEM where which make heat pumps and they just put someone else's brand on them and they might look a little bit different on the outside but on the inside they're all exactly the same and so there's a lot of these heat pumps and they've got sort of fancy sounding names and the marketing looks good but really they are entry-level heat pumps and they're not very good I wouldn't recommend them um, just because of the noise the efficiency and I don't think that they well, I've seen them not last very long. Then there's your mid-tier. So these are brands that you might recognize. Um, you might recognize them from, say, air conditioning or home appliances um, brands. And they're usually the mid-tier ones. So they are uh, the average ones. And they, when I say average, I mean, they're pretty good. I'd be happy with it at my house. But they're a little bit louder. And the best way to think about those is they just sound like an air conditioning unit. So let's say, um, brand A makes uh, an air conditioning unit and that same brand makes a hydronic heat pump They sound about the same. So if you have experience with that air conditioning unit, you know what that sounds like And then there's another tier above that and these are usually the um, Let's say northern European uh, brands where they might be coming out of Scandinavia or Germany or somewhere around there um, now not all of them of course, but there's a lot of premium brands that come from that part of the world and they've put a lot of R&D into making the, the units really good. Unfortunately, they do cost um, significantly more than, uh, let's say, the cheapest ones. They cost a little bit more than the, the mid-range ones. Uh, but in my opinion, they're worth it just for the peace of mind, uh, knowing that you're not going to hear them and have any issues and just knowing that it works efficiently. So if you would like help with getting a heat pump system which is quiet and energy efficient and isn't going to annoy you or the neighbours, please do give us a call at Euroheat. We'd love to help you.